Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. Oh my gosh, everyone. Hello and welcome to Lady Journey. Hi. We just uh, did tea spilling. We just spilled that you will a little never tea. get to hear. Join nope. the Patreon. That's not for anyone. Um, we have an incredible guest today, Gail Bennington, but you're, you you have a different last name than Bennington, or do you go by Bennington? I, no, no. It is my last name. Okay. I kept my last name. Oh, good for you. So I love I got that. Married. It's easier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And people can just call you by your, if you wanted to. You don't have to go through the rigmarole. Exactly. They can just call you whatever your married name is. And that would not be of offense. Sometimes I feel a little left out because I have two daughters and they have his last name. Yes. So I just feel like the odd man out. So sometimes mm, I pretend that I have the same last name. The weird lady in the house. (laughs) Yeah. We just live with this broad. Sarah Plain and Tall. (laughs) I loved that book. I loved it. It was romantic. I'm going to change my name to Mike's opener. Um, That's going to be... <laughs> We're married now, and I'm starting the show off. Um, but welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank we you. did your so, show, yes. of course, Bennington, yes. and we had so much fun with you, and we said we got to get you on Lady Journey, and I'm so thrilled that we actually I'm, got you on, because you're busy, you're running around. Yes, yeah, we live blood. in Astoria. That's yes. a track. I took a Lady Journey here. Yes, yes you did. You, you surely you did. did. I took several trains, and here I am. That is a oh, lady yes. journey. Yeah. Now, what's it like? How are you balancing your schedule? You have mom of two. Yeah. One is in kindergarten, just yes, started. Just started. And what's the balance like for you? There is no balance. Okay. <laughs> That's the acceptance. That pains me as a Libra. That yeah. okay. pains me to yes. admit. No, no, no. Yeah, it's just um, it's just chaos at this point. You're just like in survival mode all mm-hmm, the time. Mm-hmm. <sighs> when you give attention to one thing, you feel guilty about the other thing that you're not giving attention. Yeah. To and then you just like learn to do that for a while. I keep I keep telling myself that everything's gonna get easier when my youngest is at my oldest daughter's age. Now. Like when my my youngest is four, yeah. five years old, I think it's gonna start mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. easier. But I think that's also a thing that everyone tells themselves at every stage. That's right. How I was feeling. I was like, as soon as this baby's out. I'll feel easier. And then I'm like, oh, but I think there's a whole other side yeah. of issues. But, okay, but I'm not going to be one of those people who says something negative about it. I will say, when you're in the moment of whatever hard thing, and this is probably true of life, but it's easier to look at it in terms of motherhood because like that's where we're coming from. But it's probably all things. That any shitty thing that you are going through is like shitty now and it's going to change. And as soon as you conquer that thing and yeah. figure it out, whether it's like sleep or eating issues or like tantrums or fussiness or whatever, that thing will go away and then there'll be a whole new thing that you haven't mastered and you'll take that thing on. But the, the comforting thing is like you will not live in this like whatever the hellish state you feel like you're yeah. in now. It's not going to last. Yeah. Yes. And then you'll you'll look back on that phase as though it was like so great. Yeah, I, I'm like that with out. waiting tables. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. uh, I just want to go culture. back to waiting. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. why do we do I have the same thing. Yeah. Me and so my really close group of friends, we all worked at a restaurant together. And, you know, this would have been over a decade now. And we all still, like, we're still on like a, you know, a text together. Yeah. And like, we act like it was the best of times. <laughs> I yeah. yeah, I always yeah. I'm like, like God, I wish I could just go back to that life. And then I watch. <laughs> I've been watching TikToks of people saying this has been the worst summer for service industry. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, oh. it's the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the human people. If you could just work in a restaurant with your favorite people as your coworkers and like deal with your like crazy kitchen staff, yes. it would be fun. It would. But be. then there's like the people. It's mm-hmm. the whole human interaction that makes it really hard. And then there's also like the culture of tipping that still, I think if you're probably a decent person, you would not think that most people tip under 20%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they do. Mm-hmm. Like a oh, lot yeah. of people do. Yes. So if you're like the kindest person and you're like, I'm going to give them 25 or 30 or 35 or more, mm-hmm. what you're really doing is saying, I am going to make up for the other people who didn't do it. You're not actually going to give them more. They're not going to make over 20% tips for the whole night. You're just saying, 
let me take care of those other assholes from yes. earlier. Oh. And that's that's the best you can do for them. Yeah, you always make just yeah. the same amount of money every Friday, Saturday night. Yes. You're like, how did that happen? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. service industry is brutal. It I is. mean, it's like it as, as a cultural like like what are we doing where it's like, I'm a lord now <laughs> and you serve me. You know, it's just filling it's, this weird need for feudalism that a, we have. It's a branding issue. It's that we say surfer. And I think people are like and you serve me like there's something about that and then also I think it's just everybody is dealing with their own difficult lives Mm -hmm. and they had a bad day at work and somebody was crappy to them and then they have this moment where they go out to dinner or they go out for drinks and they're like now I have the power I wanted and then then they're just like it's so great that I have a servant instead of a server you know like yeah yeah. I have people in my life that I've eaten gone out to eat with and I'm Astounded by their behavior. (laughs) No eye contact, doesn't address the server. Argues with the server. Yeah. I was on a date once and the the server said the section is closed and the guy started arguing with her. As though I would appreciate that yes. he was advocating for us as a couple to <laughs> sit in the booth. No go, man. Oh no go. my goodness. Yeah. Oh. I had to tell someone that you both know, a coworker of mine, I'm not gonna throw a name out, but I think you'll guess, that I had to explain to him you cannot shake an empty glass of ice yeah. at a server. <laughs> <laughs> He literally yeah, went like yeah. this, and I was, I saw him snap as well. And I was like, oh my, and he was like, oh, I thought that that would just be like a nice quick way to tell them. And I'm like, no, no. They're, they're actually as they're human. running As they're running to um, uh, get some other fire put out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Chris Stanley, we all know it was you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Canceled. Oh <my> gosh. <laughs> now it's back to school time. Yes. So what's, what's going on with you back to school? Do you have uh, special lunches that you're preparing do you have back to school things that you're looking for so i just um there's no peanuts Mm. that's Ah, the thing okay that's like now it's i thought it was a thing that like some schools are not free they just assume that every child will die of peanuts so we're just like no and that's hard because kids like 90 percent of children's diets are peanut butter and jelly if they're not allergic to peanuts so like that's my biggest thing is that I have to like make sure everything yeah. is like nut free. Do you do lunch. a sun butter? I do a sun butter. I lo- oh, I love a sun butter. What's a I sun do- butter? Sunflower seed butter. People yes. aren't allergic to that. Well, I guess it's maybe one could be allergic to yeah. but it's, it's not less. like yeah, yeah. It's a, not it's as gotta peanuts. Be, peanuts people will die. They will just which die is so if weird. You just breathe on them. Yeah, you've seen those stories where somebody was like. I kissed my girlfriend with a peanut allergy and three dead. hours dead. earlier I had yeah. a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and she's dead. Yeah. Like, that's how a some perfect people are that. crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, that that's pretty much it. I I mean I she just started kindergarten. She had a great yeah. first day. Um, but you know, leading up to it, I knew she was like anxious. She was like, you know, it's a change. It's like she, a kids full are, day or a half day. It's a full day. Yeah, oh, that's a big that's deal. Big. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal. She did do big that girl. for pre K as well. Okay, but it's just it's a new school. It's some of her friends, but some of them aren't there. It's a new teacher. It's like you know, kids like a little consistency. So when you like throw new things at them, it's like, what is this? Yeah, they're yeah. they're hesitant. So um, as a witchy mom, I charged up. My crystals, the, the yes. last full moon was the the Pisces blue moon, very powerful. And so I, on her first day of school, I gave her a tiger's eye that I had charged for her. And yes. I was like, keep this in your pocket. And when you need to feel brave, you just put your hand in your pocket and you like, you know, a tiger's eye will make you feel really yes. brave and give you lots of courage. And she's like, okay, great. So we drop her off. We're watching her like walk into the school. She looks like so confident. It was like the sweetest thing. I'm not going to cry. Oh my God. <laughs> so she looked so, she looked like so confident. And then her um someone from the school was taking pictures as the kids walked in so their school posted <gasps> red the carpet i know they literally <laughs> rolled out a red so carpet for them God. they missed opportunity because there was no step and repeat but oh. like yes. they they walked up on the red carpet so they have a picture of her and she's walking up and i'm like looking at her face i'm like she looks so confident and then i looked at the picture and she's clutching the tiger's eye in her pocket Aww. and i was 
bawling yes. my eyes out because oh I was gosh. like I knew that that moment was like she really had to like work up the strength to do it but she was like putting on a good show yeah it's just like oh it's really hard. like having kids is like it's like walking around with like your heart outside of yes. your chest yes yeah. it's heartbreaking to yes. the world and you want every like good thing for them and you're just like scared yes yeah oh, I, I love- know this is like a negative thing that I'm like setting up like hey motherhood you'll be afraid forever <laughs> but that's like of all the things I feel like people go oh you'll never sleep again like don't listen to that you'll sleep again yeah. yeah you will sleep you'll be tired for a while and then you'll sleep again it does happen but the thing that I'm still not over and like I think I maybe had a panic attack about this like the when I was pregnant the first time is that I was like will I be afraid forever? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then I know, like, you know, your parents worry about you now as an adult or, like, so I'm just like, oh, so I'm just going to have anxiety until the day I drop dead? Like, wow. Yes. Is that I'm just going to be worried about these people and are they happy and are they healthy and are they safe? Like, yeah. that is so vulnerable. It's... And you're already a woman. And I'm yes. already a woman. Yeah. Like, isn't that bad enough? I'll yeah. have intrusive thoughts of, like, thinking of holding my kid walking down the stairs and then falling and just crushing them. Yes, sure. Yeah. yeah there's all these kinds yeah. of things. And usually a the stuff A lot of final you, destination moments. Yeah. Usually the stuff you think you're most Slipping afraid of. in the of, shower. <laughs> will never happen. Yeah. Accidentally um, putting them in the blender. <laughs> Oops. Damn it. How did it happen? I was making... You're on trial. <laughs> like, what happened? I was like, making I my green know. smoothie. I was reaching and holding the baby while I was making a smoothie with the top open. <laughs> No, I, no I, it's brutal. Yeah. I can't imagine it. I will. Okay, I'm going to share this. I never thought I would share this in the mil- in million years, but I'm going to say it just because. This like, is Lady Journey. This, yeah, is this, this, is this, like, this is a safe space. This is a safe space. I'm going to make you edit this out later. So when I had my second, she was only uh, a couple months old, uh, maybe two months old at the time. And my oldest was uh, starting a new uh, daycare preschool. Right? Mm. And so there was like this meetup in the playground of like, oh, all these kids are going to be in the same class. And we like let them play for a little bit and then they'll see each other on Monday on their first day of school. So we meet up and I have a newborn. And this is like one of the first times I have left the house with two children mm-hmm, like I've mm-hmm. like I've barely been out like maybe she was a month old actually and uh so we're there everything is going good I'm like kind of like I don't know I'm just like that regular social anxiety when you have to interact with it anyone yeah, but like it's which like mom is gonna be uh, yeah. nuts intense, about the diaper wipes yeah, yeah. Exactly. these so are like, oat wipes but I have one like good friend who's there and her kid is in the same class so like that's like a little bit comforting so anyway we stay for a little bit then we're like bye it was so nice to meet everybody we'll see you Monday and we're like walking out of the playground you know like in New York City this is in Brooklyn at the time so like they have like double layer like gates for you to get through so you know that like kids aren't gonna just like run out in the street or like someone's gonna like swipe them so I'm like coming up to the gate like I have my daughter she's all excited and then I see my friend like running up to me and she has this look of just kind of like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, ah, like, and I was like, what's up? And so she's like, you forgot Frankie. <laughs> I had walked away oh my God. from my newborn baby in a stroller and just said, bye everyone. Cause I was not used to yeah. looking after. Yeah. And she was asleep I know. in the stroller and not being difficult mm-hmm. and so I'm not mm-hmm. thinking of her I'm like this is why I was always like a wear your baby mom yeah that's because how like I feel stroller like is, it's just it's weird it and just, you're exhausted because you have two yes. and one yes. is new and one you're is not new there. and then yeah. you're sidetracked so with external and so, factors yeah. and my friend was like trying to be discreet but running towards us with, hey girlfriend <laughs> hey um, who forgot your baby <laughs> and so like I literally she says this I like crumple into her arm and she's like, it's okay. And I was like, did everyone see me leave my baby? <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 no one saw. And I was like, I feel like everyone knows I left my baby. And she's like, no one saw. No. It's totally fine. And oh I was like, gosh. okay, thank you. You are so sweet. And I walk out of the gate with my husband and I cry for two straight hours. Oh my I gosh. Yeah. I'm the worst. Because Mom, it's scary. Who would forget a baby. I mean, it was probably, I was probably like feet away, but it still was just like, 
I felt so incapable. Well, because you think so of like psychotic. the hot car, and that's such a yes. horror story. But it's like it could happen. Oh it could yeah, happen. there was one that happened like that, like a few years ago, mm-hmm. and it was like a dad, and he was like a parent of like six kids or something, and forgot the baby in the car. The oh. baby died, and oh, everyone so was sad. like, "This." monster and I, I was know. like he didn't do it on purpose I was like Are I you, get yeah, it this guy's yeah. world is over this his wife's life is over like they're destroyed yeah like he didn't purposefully murder his baby I know. And yeah. you get a Which public shaming like, on men top of it love yeah. to do that yeah. yeah but um but I just was like it's a horrible thing but I just kept thinking like he's devastated like I yes. can't even oh. imagine and I kept thinking like six kids like I just I literally just walked away from having two kids. That was like all I couldn't wrap my brain around yeah. having yeah. kids. But I love the idea of you like walking back discreetly to the group like, "Hey girls, I was just getting a little something over there." <laughs> just grabbing my stroller. Yeah. I was so- oh. We, I was that's so a thing. Short. That's a Waldorf thing. You can crying and telling my husband like we have to change schools. Like these parents saw me leave my baby, and he was like, "She said no one saw." And I'm yeah. like, "I no, they saw me leave my baby." <laughs> and he was like, "But we didn't leave." He's like, "We probably would have remembered in a few minutes." I was like, "A few yeah. minutes? She's a month old. <laughs> She's a baby." Oh, I know. Now, does the does the witch the witch practices do they come in to help kind of assuage the vulnerability, or how do you use that? Yeah, I think like whatever. Whatever tools people use, probably like whatever works for you. Like if you're, that's your thing, or if you're like a as a mindfulness, yeah, like, yeah, like a just, mindfulness practice, exactly. And it like helps you take stock on what you want to focus on or what you feel like is going off. And you know, and I have like kind of incorporated my daughters into it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna raise these two little witchy babies, but I also feel like. I'm cautious to press anything like in a religious sense because they're so young that it's so important for them to learn like what is real, what is grounded, what is like in front of them. And like that stuff is really important. Like I remember uh, reading up on how you explain death to a child and like it's like a really difficult thing. Like me and my husband were like, is she ready? And we had had people pass away when she was teeny and we're like well we're not ready to explain it and like if she does if it's not somebody who's in her daily life then like maybe we could just wait so it comes to the time when it's like okay this is now you know she needs to understand what this is and it's like incredibly difficult but one of the things I read about it is like it's totally cool to have your own either spiritual or religious beliefs about what happens after death but you can't bring that in because they, it's hard enough for them to like understand. Yeah, it's a wide concept. Is, it's yeah, yeah. Mm. So like they always say things like, "Don't say they're up in the clouds. Don't say they're in heaven. Don't say they are reincarnated. Like whatever the thing you yeah. believe yeah. is, they're yeah. trapped in it's a portal." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, Maybe none of this is real. Maybe w- this is all a big video game, and then they just woke up with yeah. a controller in their hand. Like you don't want to yeah. explain that. To, like, We're the matrix yeah. <laughs> the matrix is real honey and i'm sure of it and that's our religion simulation so, yeah, I don't, so you know i i try to do that in just a way of being like mindful and connected for me um like depending on the company that i'm with i'll describe it different ways like for some people if it seems like they'll be receptive like Witch, witchy, witchy. You go full or, witch. But if it's just like <laughs> yeah. pagan, I could use neo pagan. I yes. could use Wiccan. Oh, yeah. I have to feel someone out. Yeah, yes. Yes. Because well, you know, some yeah. people, you know, the, the you get judgment. Word can be big yeah. to some yeah. people, where other people, they're like Wiccan. Like, what are you, like a LARPer or something? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I have to be like, I have to feel someone out. Or if I just don't get a good vibe, like, it's just like, I'm nothing. People like, don't worry like, about like, it. Devil or Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> or they're like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a spectrum of reactions. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, we yeah. love, as you can see, we love all of our stones I know, it was, and things. I was we wondering if you had curated bits. this for me, or is this like your usual setup? Well, well we, we do a stone dedication. When I we get a new it. Patreon, we, like we dedicate a stone to them, and we ah. talk about the magical... That is so awesome. The magical prospects. So. Every now and then we run out of a stone and then we're like, you get a shell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep this we've rock got, uh, that an I antler. Found. Yeah. 
So, but we, but we love it. And I, I mean, I like magic in the sense of like appreciating nature yes. on a level that I don't think that you get to in your day to day life. And consumerism is like so all over the place, you know. Yes. So I think it's nice to go back to Mother Earth. And then that's that is like a good focal point for me when I talk to them. It's just like it's just like an Earth based mm-hmm. appreciation. It's like what's going on. In the seasons, what's going on with the moon, what's going on with the way that affects us. And, like, I kind of keep it at that. Yeah. Yes. I try yeah. not to be, like, Do you ever there's meet a men? horned god. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this is and a, a love triple potion. Goddess moon. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever meet male Wiccans? Um, that's so funny that you say that. Because they are out there. <laughs> <laughs> they do exist. The warlocks. I'm, I'm um, ready. Yeah. yeah. No, that was, that's so funny because a friend of mine, like once I like, I was like, okay, this is like a new mom friend. So I was like, am I saying this? Am I comfortable saying this? And eventually like, I was like, okay, she's past the vibe. Like I can say it. And her first question was like, is your husband a warlock or a wizard? <laughs> and I was like, I love this so much. Wizard. Yeah. You're a wizard. He's Harry. a wizard. Yes. Yeah. He's um he's Hufflepuff. And yeah. Um yeah. But I don't know many of them that are straight anyway. Well, I don't know many who are yes. straight. Yeah. Well, we always like to say, because people get especially where I, I'm from Texas. Yeah. So you come out with Wiccan. Yeah. And yeah. they think you're worshiping worshiping the d- devil. Right. Yeah. And Katie's like, it's just a little lady magic. Just yeah. a little lady magic. That's perfect. <laughs> it's just now, a little magic for ladies that ladies enjoy. But you know what? Here's the thing. And this is probably a stereotype. And to male Wiccans or Pagans, like, I love you. I'm here for you. Just kidding. But there's because so much of the uh, pagan traditions that like we don't use anymore we're so uh like sexual based yeah it Mm -hmm. feels like when i meet a male wiccan you're just like oh you like boning (laughs) with like by a bonfire under yeah like that's just what i assume like orgy yeah yes like the that movie the witch yeah yes horns on your head yes I'm like that's cool too but that's just like my assumption yeah i hear a like straight male Witchery. Yes, you're like, and you're like, I'm more into crafts with nature <laughs> and my daughters. I also want to say, I think, however, uh, so I'm like what some people say, like a hereditary, like my mom is a witch. My mom practiced since I was a child. So like I, it was given to me, you know, like. Yeah, it, and like the Stevie Nicks witch era. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. And like just the like best with me era. and my husband, like my dad is not that, but my mom is. It's almost like it's like passed on to like the women. Yeah, you know, the like Judaism. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So um, I think that like because of that, I, I'm always just open to however people find it. Like some yes. people find it because they're like, they feel chaotic in their life and they found this thing. And some people are like, I love the movie The Craft. And that's <laughs> wow, I, I found it. it. And I'm like, that's great, yeah. too, because yeah. that movie's awesome. Um, yeah, but, you know, I know. I, I do think it's interesting and delightful how there are like the different aesthetics of witches. It's like the 90s grunge witch. Yes. We've got the um, ethereal forest witch. I love that. And I would say, like, for example, like my mom is much more like hippie aesthetic witch okay yeah and i have like a, a little bit more got, of like, a gothier edge oh, really it. i was gonna say like love millennial goth. like the millennial harry potter kind lo- of yes. heritage yes. yeah i'm a hufflepuff i love that gen z like their biggest thing is they're just like oh my god like why are you so obsessed with harry potter i know it's like have you like, read it <laughs> have you even do read they it? have a book that's equivalent for them i think it's tiktok yeah it's, their- <laughs> it's like yeah because I was late to the game for the Harry Potter and I read, I've only read the first book and I've been carrying around the second book for five years in my bag. <laughs> That's a big it's one. A, it's a big one, yeah. I'm just going to keep getting bigger, My one so. arm is sculpted. <laughs> <laughs> but when I read the first one, I was like, I get it. Yeah. Oh, it's I, it's so such an imaginative world and yes. that she's created an escapism that yeah. you're like. And this is before we knew she was a turf. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yes. just like pure joy. <laughs> Pure yeah. joy, and it and it hits all of the boxes where you're like, I want to be working towards something. I want to get money, and like everything that it's, you like. It's also the thing, and you'll see this a lot in children's fiction, where it's like a child discovers. 
that they are not ordinary, but they are special. And it happens yes. over and over. Yes. Oh, you thought you were just an ordinary girl. You thought you were just an ordinary boy living your life, but you have a magical power or you have or you're actually a princess or whatever the thing is. It happens a lot. And it's so sad when you think of it, because I think we're all just like really scared that we're ordinary when we're children. Yeah, that's why like we're, we're all like, trying to be movie stars. <laughs> we're yeah. like, I think it's me. It's I'm true. the one with the, the beautiful face. <laughs> now, I had a fun witch experience recently. I was in Indiana, which is a conservative state. Uh-huh. Uh, however, um, outside of where my parents live, my parents live in Muncie, there is a spiritualist community. It's called Camp Chesterfield. And it's been there since like 1886. And it's just like a small compound. Basically, now it's kind of like a little, almost like a little neighborhood, right? But it's like a little, a little grove. Everybody lives around this grotto, and it's all spiritualists, clairvoyants, palm readers. So we always okay. love to go. We just go for like a walk in the grotto. We go to the bookshop, and they've got like all of you know. I I got some money candles. Nice. Sedona's um, like this. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. It's like it so fun. They have like little classes or workshops, and yeah. now they're doing stuff on Zoom, which feels very magical. Yeah. You know, like use the Corporate. technology. Yeah, <laughs> but I I love it, and it's just there in the middle of nowhere. It's like who who would think that in the middle of nowhere in Indiana you would get to go into this like yeah it feels like you're in Santa Fe or something. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't think that. Um, because of like John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> but he's actually yeah. quite liberal. You know what I mean? Like, I think he would actually be open minded. Right. Isn't yeah. that funny that. though about any any musician with like a certain sound like that? Um, and like, I feel like you could say this about even like Bruce Springsteen or something. It's like, they like have to disassociate the people who listen to them have to disassociate from the lyrics or the vibe. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they're just like, yeah, America. I don't think you're listening. Well, like the politicians are like, that's our song. And they're like, no, it's not. Jack and Diane (laughs) sucking on a chili dog. That doesn't sound like Indiana. Um, Now, so one thing I think is so fun, so exciting about having kids is like getting back in touch with the inner child. You know, do you think like as a witchy woman, as a mom, are there things that you get to do with your daughters that maybe you don't expect it? And then suddenly you're like transported to another time. Yes, I think for sure. And like you'll see that too. It's it's very much like the like male experience too is like they like get to do these like kiddish things that they're not normally comfortable. But it's the same like for women too. Like first of all, I really love swings. Oh, yes. Swings. There's no opportunity for adults to be on swings. No, yeah. and there should be. But then when you have children, yeah. you're just like, oh, you're going down the slide. I'm just going to sit here a moment. And yeah. All of a sudden you're just like, <laughs> like feeling it. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, this is like, I'm like stimming or something. Like yes. I can feel myself and I'm, I said to my husband the other day, I was like, I think we need a swing set in the backyard. And I re- oh. was like, I think I meant for me. Yes. <laughs> like, I don't have a swing set. They well, say it's good for adults because we lose our sense of balance that we should have adult jungle gyms. Oh, that would be fun. Yes. You're like to your friend, like, you want to go like play I around? I like the idea of you like an elder <laughs> jungle gym. Yeah, it's like racquetball. It's yeah. like a little racquetball. Yeah, well, but there's all that stuff. And all, like um, years ago, like when me and my husband didn't have kids, we were always doing stuff our vacations were like not uh, very posh. Not we were not like traveling to Europe. We were like taking road trips and going to like Lake George and like Lake doing George. things. And then we we're Come like, on. okay, this is getting weird. We're doing family yes. fun activities, yes. and we have no children. Like it started yeah. to feel no. strange. And the, the <sighs> one time we were at this uh, this one lake and. Th- there was like a floating dock and everyone was swimming out to the floating dock and then like jumping off the floating dock. Yes. And I was like, should we go do that? And he was like, um, it seems like all the kids are doing it. And I was like, no, there, there's guys up there. And he was like, they have kids. Yeah. So we would just be like two grown ass adults being like, we jumping off the dock. Like, yeah. and just like, yeah. And we looked at each other like, we need kids. Like, this is getting oh weird. Oh my God. No. You and I are, is getting weird. Like, yeah. It's like when you're in a hotel hot tub and it's just you and then a kid gets in there and you're like, I got to get out. <laughs> I don't want to scar someone yeah. by talking about my thoughts. 
Well, Mike and I <laughs> staring were, at this kid. Mike and I were in San Diego, which maybe we'll talk about in a little bit on a different episode. But we went to the zoo. We got free tickets to go to the zoo. It was incredible. It's yeah. one of the zoos. It was, yeah. it, and it's also they do like a huge conservation effort. Like it's really cool. But we were there, and we were. I was like, oh my god, and we're like looking at the animals. We're like, he's goofy, you know, just like goofing, <laughs> goofing to each other, and like weird voices. And then I was like. Oh my God, like we're, everyone here has an infant. Right. And we're just here like talking in the voice of the orangutan. Like, like, what? I was like, we have to have kids because we can't come back here like this. Like, what are we doing? You're like the zoo version of a Disney adult. Yes. 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 I'm like, I love that. <laughs> like, ew, what's do wrong you, with you? Do you know any Disney adults? Are they- I, do. I do. I know yeah. a couple. Yeah. I know a couple. I do. And I adore her. Yeah. But it is one of those things where you're like, I don't get it. I've yeah. never been a Disney gal. My family was actually anti Disney. Yeah. I don't I know Disney. why. Yeah. But it, it's just never been. Is your last name DeSantis? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I have um, no idea. It's just like they weren't, we weren't a Disney family. I could go. That I could see myself going to Disney. But, you know, that, but yeah. I'm not obsessed with it. Right. Because I feel like at a certain point, I just was like, oh, that's for little kids. Well, that might be something that's going to be new for you. You'll watch all the movies maybe that you didn't watch. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, Disney Plus. Eventually. Not the first I'm all year. for that because, um, um, I actually was talking to Joe. I was like, you know what? I would be game for a cruise, a Disney cruise. Oh. And I don't never, generally like cruises. I've never cruised. Yeah. I have thelosophobia, which is the fear of like deep, dark, open water. Gotcha. So that. I'm like, yeah. I don't it's think unnatural. I it's it seems like it would be very hard for me. Well, some yeah. cruises, some cruises are getting better now with like eco. You know, so they right. do. They can be more ecologically friendly, and okay. well, I would not I as did, bad. I think as they used to be. Some, well, some are. You have to be yes. careful. But. Well, one cruise, the only cruise I did, you know, like look at the labor, and you're like, uh, I feel like I'm on a slave ship. <laughs> yeah. Where, and I started being like. Where did you get all these? Where, where, are you guys okay? Are yeah. you paying them the right amount? Yeah. This is like, like where are their families? Because they're gone for factories. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever known any comics who are like cruise ship comic? Like they'll go out on a yes. cruise? Because I know my dad has known comics who have like done that. Yeah. Like and they, not just like, not just like, oh, we're doing a thing and we're out for a week, but like they live just on a cruise ship out, for like yeah. a few months. I have a lot of friends that do it because in Houston, for a lot of them, it's it's a huge income source. Right. You can make a lot of money. I've actually had quite a bit of respect for them because you have to do two kinds of shows and they're both like hour long. Like one can be adult and then one has to be super base and clean. And I was right. like, you have to have two separate hours. And then you have wow. to yeah, interact with the other cruisers while yeah. you're like trying to get a bite at the buffet and they're like, I want to tell you something. And you're like, sir, please. <laughs> I was talking to a girl who did it a couple of weeks ago and she was like, yeah, I just bring a bag of granola bars and I just eat it in my quarters and I don't go out. I was like, yeah. get a wig. That's they what lose, I would do. You kind of lose touch. Yeah. Because I notice a few comics that are out on the sea for a long period of time. <laughs> you're like, your They're act has changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. They're like sailors. Like but I would imagine yeah. for those, whether you're like a comic or you're like a performer on a cruise ship, you're like the celebrity on the cruise ship. Like, yeah. Because if they're mm-hmm. like, oh, mm-hmm. like if you do we well. don't have access. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I've heard one did so bad that they helicoptered him off. Stop. Wow. And I can get his name and it's been floating around for ages. That's hilarious. Oh they medivaced him. Yes. It's an they're emergency. Like, like, I think I'd be one of them. Safety? Like the, the, uh, he everyone just, had turned on him or? It was, he just wasn't the right fit and they were like, we can't pay you. Meaning, like, your contract is done. We're paying for the helicopter yeah. instead. We'd la- rather pay for a helicopter How funny. Yeah. have you do another set here. That's heartbreaking. I don't. I would be one of those people that they would probably have to helicopter off. Because <laughs> if I got that, there's times I've gotten corporate gigs where I'm like, did you watch anything? Right. Did you even? Did you YouTube me at yeah. all? Or like, I don't mm. think I'm are the they, right fit, but I'm going to take your money. Are corporate <laughs> gigs just nightmare? Like, Awful. is that the worst they're awful. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why they pay the most. Right. But yeah, they're bad. I did one in Disney recently and it was for a, a media conglomerate that just merged and they wanted Joe 
and I are a couple, but then we found out they just wanted a couple of comics, mm-hmm. <laughs> not a couple. That's hilarious. Because we were like, yeah. why did you guys choose us? And then they're like, was it, why a couple? Did you want us to share a room or whatever? And they were like, no, we just wanted a couple of comics. <laughs> so it was like a minor confusion. That's hilarious. But it was so bad. Where they're so nice to you in the beginning, and then when you get off, you don't see them. <laughs> Joe and I like, like Homer simpson into oh, the bushes. <laughs> And left of the kitchen, and then we were like, never wanted to see them again. That's great. That would be great once you have the baby, because then you can just um, take your baby with you as yeah. like a sympathy. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I need to tend to my baby. Actually, um, they're so bad. I, they're so bad. Some are good. I just never had one that was great. Once when we had Jessica Kirsten on as a guest, she was talking about different types of gigs, corporate gigs, and she was talking about taking gigs of like private parties, like just like. She Jewish does hell gigs. And yes. it, it's like, I was crying laughing so hard her oh describing my gosh. it. But she always gets food, so that's good. They yes. send her food. <laughs> but then they also yeah. like just treat her like they're like yeah. her niece. It so, always sounds yeah. like they're talking in the middle of her set, being yeah. like, what is she doing? <laughs> it's incredible. But she had me dying. Oh, she's so yeah. funny. She's the best. She's so funny. She's a mom. She's got four kids. She is a mom. Yeah. yeah. She's got, she has four now. Yeah. Was yeah. that? Was it um there were twins in the She has twins. That's why. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, I That's think right. the, the littlest ones are twins. Yes. Oh my gosh. No, are you gonna have more kids, do you think? Um, I know. Is it I'm annoying when people bring no, it up? No, 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 no. It's totally fine. But I think two is well, I mean, if I left my newborn <laughs> one month old. <laughs> I know you might really want to worry about like yeah. You don't want to take a chance. <laughs> now, how yeah. how f- far apart are your two kids? So they're almost exactly three years apart. Okay, That's so perfect. you have exactly. one, four and one one. Yeah, uh, five and two. Five and two. So okay. they're five and two, and yeah, they're almost. They were just a month shy of being three years apart, just a oh, little under three that's, years that's apart. A perfect distance. You had a yes. pandemic baby. Right? I did. Yeah. yeah, which is weird because, um, like when you know things started to open back up, like people didn't even see me pregnant. If like yeah. they didn't like know oh, me, hilarious. Or, like, you know, we're not like a friends secret on social. baby. I, it's like I had a secret baby. Yeah. So it's, you know, when I came back like to in the serious, 50s. you know, <laughs> when, you're a teenage mom. Yeah. They send you off. <laughs> I went to my master's program. <laughs> when I came back to serious, there were people like, "How's your daughter?" And I was like, "I have, I have d- two. I yeah. Have two. And they were like, "What happened? When, when, <laughs> How? What happened? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because serious was close for a while. I forgot about that. Yeah, you guys we, were doing well, the we, Zoom. Yeah, we were just doing Zoom. We were doing uh everything from home it was like a very crazy weird time but they were quick like Mm -hmm. we we missed no time yeah yeah you know like it was like i feel like it was like a thursday that the world started shutting down and we were live on monday wow so we like had no time that it, it was weird to like process it and do like a daily show when everything felt so strange because yes. I remember yeah. when they said we're going to send you home with equipment and you guys can be on Zoom and, and you'll do this show if a global pandemic does break out. Oh, and so they I, were in ready. my mind, yeah. like I was like, why Why would we be doing a show? Like that would be yeah. insane, right? The world would be doing over. Doing a comedy show. <laughs> People would be eating each other in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, what do they want us to joke about? Yeah. Except, yeah. But then I realized like how quickly everyone just went, okay, so we're living in this weird world and there was like still news and there were still things to talk about and it just felt so strange the like the day it was all going down and I was like and what would you like me to say exactly about a global pandemic like I was like (laughs) what the heck is this world but now I look back on that I miss it it's I miss it. Yeah, it I had fun. a good time. Let's go back. I know. <laughs> I, I let out another virus. Baby. It was great. Yeah, you had to stay um, at home. Did you have, have any moments? Better... Did you have? Sorry. Oh no, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part in the show where we apologize to each other <laughs> that, profusely. I'm that's sorry such to everyone. A lady journey, I'm right? sorry for everything I'm, I've done. I'm sorry that I made you guys yeah. interrupt each other. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. We're okay. We're okay. Um, <laughs> did you ever have any moments while you're doing the radio show at home, like with the girls in the background? You know, like just I'm thinking of that iconic. 
girl video of the that kid video, that walked yeah, the in like girl this. Coming was, in like this. this yeah. weird thing was that video had come out and it was like maybe even like a few months or so before the pandemic. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the thing we we all thought it was like the funniest thing and the little girl comes like marching in and then here comes the baby like speeding in. <laughs> and, and the we, mom you're like I, I identify just, with her. And yeah. we did not Panic know stricken. that that was going to be like all of our lives. Like people mm-hmm. who were working, parents who had to work from home that's what every day looked like. Like the craziest thing was I, especially when it first happened, I didn't even have a desk in my bedroom. Like mm. I didn't work from home. I used yeah. to go to a studio. So I didn't. So I was laying in bed, <laughs> breastfeeding yeah. on the air, headphones on. And like I would have to say to my dad and to Chris, like, oh, I'm going to turn my Zoom off. I'm breastfeeding again. Yeah. A yeah. hundred times during the show. <laughs> so it was crazy. Yeah. Like most of the time people were listening to me. I was breastfeeding as I was talking. That's yeah. what an inside enough. tip. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> It was really weird. Yeah, it was really weird. Oh, now, so I wanted to ask you about your breastfeeding because you were saying you're still doing it. You're into it. What what's the what's the big pros for you? What's the cons? Oh, my God. The pros are all the things that are healthy for babies about breastfeeding. Right. The microbiome. Yes. And not just like on a physical level, but like an emotional bonding level. It's so great for them. Yeah. Yeah. But it is not so great for just me. Just being drained of your juncture. life. Force. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, I guess it helps me keep the weight down. Like, all your fat yeah. goes to your breast milk. That's fun, I yeah, guess. Yeah, she was saying 600 calories you burn. During yes. Something crazy yes. like, like that. Like, well, you do look great. Yeah. You look amazing. I'm like, why aren't there gyms where yeah. ladies can but, just breastfeed? Yeah, so yeah. I, I breastfed my oldest until she was almost three like maybe two two months shy of three so i was eight months pregnant and mm-hmm. breastfeeding wow and i was like oh so well, we gotta stop a, it's a myth that you can't get pregnant while you're breastfeeding it is a myth yeah okay mm-hmm. I was, you heard it here yes yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> yes i did because i thought for sure that because i had heard the same i was like oh i won't you know like i won't get my period back because i'll be breastfeeding and i think I think it was only like a couple months. I think I you're actually mine. really fertile after pregnancy. Yeah. Because my mom got pregnant really fast. My sister and I are 16 months apart. Oh, yeah. That's like nearly mm. Irish twins. Like yeah. Very South close African to twins. Yes. <laughs> so a little bit longer. Slightly, slightly older. No, Sarah, what are you, what are you thinking breastfeeding? What are you doing? I'm going to try breastfeeding, yeah. but I said I will not get my feelings hurt if the baby doesn't take. Because apparently they... They don't happen. take yeah. sometimes, yeah. And also, the first week is really hard. And it's hard to know when you're going through that that you will get better at it. And yeah. so, like, sometimes people throw in the towel, and that's, like, totally understandable. Because I was, like, the my first week, I was, like, I can't imagine. And I remember when I, it was, like, seven days later, she was a week old, and I was, like, I wish I could go back in time just days ago and show myself, here I am, I'm breastfeeding, I'm, like, eating dinner while I'm breastfeeding. Yeah. I'm alive, she's alive, it's okay. But at the time, you're, it's just such a big shift and change on your body, and people react to it different ways. But, yeah, it could be really hard, and I think that's a good approach. It's, like, you're gonna, you gotta be easy on yourself, you're gonna give it a go, you Gotta just get the tea bags, of, the nipple tea bags. Yes, you, you need. The pain sounds support. horrific to me. Um, but I don't want to buy breast formula. Yeah, it depends on the person. Some people are really. Yeah. Su- my first time, it was very, very painful, and then you get used to it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you get used to pain <laughs> because we're women, right? That's a, that's what they tell you. But yeah. yeah, for me, because I I had only basically took a month off, like so, I've been breastfeeding for five straight yeah. years with only like a month vacation so that happened. Do you have two yeah. at one time? Or how do you do two kids in the so household I, breastfeeding? Right. So I didn't. So I like when I was eight months pregnant, I was like, it's, I got to wean her because like I, I couldn't tandem feed. The thought of it was so stressful. I know people are <laughs> do it. And it's a, yeah, yeah, it's just too much. I am That's mother. <laughs> Witchery yeah, that I like, was I've willing to enough. do. Yeah. I've done enough. <laughs> so I like. I was like, man, this has got it. She was almost three. You know, I think the back when I I had my first, the I think maybe it's World Health Organization or one of them said you should breastfeed 
for the first year. And now they've moved that up to two years. Oh, wow. Like that was, wow. Okay. No, no, no. World Health had always said it, but it was whatever the one is in, that's just the U.S. They were like, one is fine. Yeah. So now mm-hmm. they've moved that is like recommended two years. And that's like a big shift of what it was. But I will say this. I was breastfeeding a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old. I'm currently doing that with my youngest. I'm like, there are not a lot of other broads around, you know, the mm-hmm. playground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whipping it out with this yeah. kid who's <laughs> saying full sentences. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, that's the thing. I, when I first st- uh, had my daughter, I was like, I'm going to breastfeed. I'm going to breastfeed publicly because not because it's comfortable for me, but I want other people. I want to normalize it in the world. Yeah. So I'm yeah, not going to be afraid normalized. to do it. To I'm not going to like Why are people go weird hide. about yeah. it? Yeah. But then. As my daughter got older, it just started to feel weird. Like the bigger she got, <laughs> mommy. Yeah, like when she's able to unbutton your shirt for you, then you start going like, "I this feel is Game like, of Thrones." Yeah. That's exactly. I was like, "That's what it looks yeah. like." This full-grown child on my lap. So I like my shame came later. Like yeah. at first, I was like, "Look, it's natural. This is I'm a mother. This is how everyone should be." And now I'm just like, where can I hide this giant <laughs> child as she breastfeeds? There's a because you yeah. doesn't need it for food and sustenance. She's like, yeah, it's very weird for someone to see a child eat a cheeseburger and then walk over and be like, can I have breast milk? Like that sentence. Yeah, yeah they're like, you're doing that, and I'm like, oh yes. <laughs> no, there was a yeah. New York Magazine uh, cover story years ago, and it, the photo was a woman, and it was her son standing on like an apple box breastfeeding he was like five or Mm -hmm. older maybe even close to eight wow and people lost their shit yeah yeah Yeah. they were like three is one thing you know and i will tell you this too i've noticed this of mothers of sons that people seem to act like it's time for him to man up and this is weird (laughs) This boy and their mom. Isn't that strange? Like that they wouldn't have the same reaction to like a female child. Yeah. yeah. But, and I think one is part of uh, our society. Our, we've just sexualized breasts and we've decided that's sexual even though it's made up. It's just like a made up kink that we made up. Because yeah. We're weirdos. Yeah. We just made it up. Um, but also that I think there's this like thing that people are like to little boys are like man up. You yeah, know, yeah. Time, yeah. Just time to be tough. shoving toxic masculinity yeah. down their throat. And I think yeah. that people do that. So I've noticed my mom friends that, like, they said family members really were like, you're not still breastfeeding him. And he would be like six months or one years old. Yeah. I'm like, that's one totally, year old. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a totally. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we we'll wean him off and then we'll get him on porn. Are yeah, you happy? Yeah. Like a real man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love too. It's like it does seem that it's become like slightly more acceptable, but I can't tell if it's any better or not. But I see all of these like breastfeeding pods that are like popping up. Yes. But it's like, but what it is is like a non ventilated cubicle that, that a guy has, can jerk off into. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like, is this is or like that put a little spike in, yeah. in there or something? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather like, just sit with a sit blanket the airport. lightly yes. o- draped yeah. over. Sit in the airport and I mean, so I can have like a, yeah. a snack without the smell of just air, stale that's, air. That's another one too. That I'm going I, into my pod. When I was, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my own portable pod with me. <laughs> when, when I was breastfeeding and they were teeny, you know, like still like infants, I was... I made the decision not to cover myself because I thought even when I'm uncomfortable, there's going to be a circumstance where a woman can't cover herself. She doesn't have something to cover herself. So I'm just like, I'm just going to do it so that other people see it's a thing to do. Even when I would be like, I'd rather not do it in this moment. I just don't want to do it around my in-laws. It's, I feel uncomfortable. It's, it is. It is. Yeah. And even it's uncomfortable in a way that you don't, think it's going to be like one you're like okay this is a part of my body that I've covered my entire life Mm -hmm. I'm taught to have shame of and then now it's I'm just gonna have them out and they're gonna be out so that that you're already thinking is gonna be weird but it's more just like when someone's comfortable with you doing it then you start going like what yeah what are you doing (laughs) free the nipple look at that little and you're like oh (laughs) your face is so close (laughs) you're like you want to get in there or what's going on thirsty what's up but yeah like it takes a little adjustment but you know what will do it is birth and and breastfeeding you lose all sense of like dignity and privacy really fast like I remember thinking like two weeks in like I 
easily could answer the door for the pizza guy with my tits out and it would mean nothing to me. Yeah. You just yeah. That you're walking around but it, in like but a diaper. But to him. You know? Yeah. It would, it would <laughs> mean the world to him. Um, but okay. you're walking around yeah. in a diaper and like a stained shirt and you're like, yeah. you're, I mean, that's just, you just live like that for the first like couple weeks. Yeah. And you get comfortable with being like super animalistic that you're like, who am I? What have I been? Yeah. And Interesting. Like, and that's a yeah. short lived time. Like you, you will put on pants again. You will be a person. But like for a very short yeah. time, you're like an animal. The identity crazy. shift goes through so many I have that yeah, now, different eras. As an adult, like I'll go running and my pelvic floor is really weak. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> even though I work out, yeah. um, I'll sometimes pee and back in the day, I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. But now after my run, I'll just go into a Walgreens with sure P- pee yeah. stain hey, and like this whatever think, get used to it like or period already, stain yeah. remember yeah. back in the day like always checking and then nowadays oh. I'm like whatever deal with it yeah. I- I've bled through my pants yeah oh sorry yeah. I just don't have white pants anymore <laughs> <laughs> I've retired them <laughs> there's something freeing about that I remember young being younger and um, you know being with like somebody's like grandmother or something and be, her being like I just peed my pants a little bit and you're like yeah. oh my god yeah, you're like, <laughs> is everything okay are you on death's door yeah like yeah <laughs> When you are a, a yeah. youngster, it's like, oh, this is like the worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. We all just lose our dignity. <laughs> and like, like we end up being okay. I've got yeah. shit to do. Right. Yeah. That's oh, how it feels. Like, that's freeing. your problem. Yeah. Also, yeah. in New York, you're like, everyone's seen it all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a man shitting in the subway. Am I supposed <laughs> to feel bad that I had a little drip? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're not going to feel that. But you're right. Like when you were like middle school age, the thought of it, nothing could be devastating yeah. more mortifying. I remember. So I got my period when I was 11. Me too. So oh, a, my yeah. God. It, a, a traumatic age. And I like, was like, are you kidding? I'm like, when you think about it, 11 is a child. It's on the early side, yeah. but be, normal. Right. Still I'm not normal. like, ew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but kids, Chicken hormones. <laughs> kids, like, kids can't remember anything. Like, I was then like. I was in charge of knowing when to pack things for myself and my cycle. And yeah. Like, so it was like, that's too much responsibility. It for is. For an 11 year old. And I remember once when I was in middle school, I had forgotten to pack pads because back then it's like. They don't make it t- for that age. Like not, no. You can't have a tampon. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I didn't have a tampon Wild. until I was out of high school. I was 17. Yeah. So yeah. I was th- just still in. I had yeah. sex but first in order to get it. Me too. I couldn't get it in. <laughs> I couldn't. Same. You know what I think? It actually helps that because yes, I think I understood the angle. Yeah, the angle was coming yes, at it yes. from the wrong approach, straight in. So straight then, in. So then, finally, after having sex, I went like, "Okay, let me think about how." And then I, I get like, it. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You need an outside perspective yes. to understand like a world of mystery that's going. Yeah, down there. and I remember like remember like the little drawings on there, and they were always like crouching down, like try crouching. Yeah, no, or, like get on the me. squatty party, or like a gargoyle yeah. on top of like, the toilet. <laughs> That you're like, but, what? But like, I don't know. Maybe we all have different trajectories down there, but that one does not work. That is like, that closes me in a way that I was, I was basically just up against a wall when yeah, I was yeah, trying to, that yeah. was not something that could have been done. So you're on you your like own in that area. On the toilet yes. or whatever. Yeah. That no. didn't make any sense to me. I have a, yeah. I have a tilted pelvis also. Yeah. So I think like when, when you have that, which is like one fourth of women. Right. But those drawings yeah. aren't for us. It's no. like a left handed pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, these are not for us. <laughs> Yes, it, it didn't. It my, didn't work. You're like my tampons curve to the left. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Like instead yeah. of having just like regular day super, you're like, do you curve to the left? Do you curve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's I remember it. those days of the giant diaper pad where you're like, I guess I better get the big guns. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> just the wings. And also, I grew up. Uh, Never so landed on there. When I was a kid, I lived in Florida. Oh, to the so side. It was like oh. so the overnight pad in the heat of a Florida night. Oh, it's just first of all, it's like a canoe that you're wearing yeah. between your legs. Yes. Yeah, but it's also like the heat of a pillow, like you're, you're <laughs> like a pillow. It's, like, your an leg, like you can't blanket. fully close your legs because it's so much padding there. Oh my god, that's hilarious! And you're 11, so you're like the right. only one dealing with this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, think I knew one other girl 
in my class who had it before me, and I think she got it at nine, which God bless her. There's a f- we had a few. Bless her heart. I can yeah. name them by name. <laughs> <laughs> Shout, out. Out time. <laughs> Shout out time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Gail! It was so awesome having you oh on my Lady God, Journey. Yes, so much thank fun. you. You are so and, and you're so fun come and so back knowledgeable. On Bennington, anytime. We love having you guys. Oh, Always. thank you. Yes, check out Gail on Sirius XM on Bennington. every day, right? Every day. Yes, weekdays, uh, noon yes. in the East. And uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. And please follow us on our YouTube, like and subscribe. Yeah. Lady Journey. <laughs> <laughs>